Welcome to our live stream tonight. We have a very special guest that is uh, very generously given some of his time to talk with us, and that is Mr. Watson Wu. Let's bring Watson on here. Watson, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, if you are not familiar with Watson, then you and you care about sound, you've probably been living under a rock. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, Watson has, um, I, rather than me kind of ramble on and give a bio of Watson. I, I think we should just kind of talk. And I, I do have a, a curiosity question, if we could just d dive in with this, is I, I've never heard of a school where you learn how to do sound effects recording and, and the kind of sound design work that you do. So how did you end up where you where you are today? Oh, I, I actually went to school for music education. Um, okay. And uh, I was involved in chorus, uh, piano, and a professor um, came to my school and said, "Hey, uh, I like your I like your performance. I'd like to, for you to come to my school, offer your scholarship." So, and uh, I fortunately I met a lot of great teachers. So I, I wanted to be a professor. And uh, but but in college, I found out that composition, music theory, was my forte. I was pretty good at it. It gave me a writing assignment. I could do it, and um, so. But at that time, I was, it was pretty much too late, so I kept going with, with uh, music ed. Uh, but I, after school, I, I um, wrote music for games, for ads. And one of my clients asked me, hey, can you, can you do sound effects as well? I said, well, let me give it a shot. I've always loved recording. I, I was in bands uh, before in Miami. And um, so I, I had the gear. So I, you know, if I couldn't get the library or get the sounds, I would record it myself or do a better performance of that sound and just fell into it. So I, I tried it and the client liked it. I'm like, oh, cool. And it was a faster turnaround than writing music. So I just fell into it and just kept going. I, I really enjoy because sound effects is also music to my ears. You know, I love the different, different frequencies, different uh, things you get to do get access to animals, cars, weapons, um, the things I love. Yeah. And I, and, I, <laughs> and that's the thing is I, I, so I followed you for a long, long time on, um, Twitter and over on YouTube as well, just kind of, you know, as you, if you've posted things over the years and uh, the thing that I see the most is, well, on Twitter, I do see some food posts, which make me very hungry sometimes. <laughs> but a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times what I see is um, mostly vehicles, especially mm -hmm. performance vehicles, and mm -hmm. um, then a good number of firearms as well. And so, um, that by the way, that's an interesting story. I had no idea that your background was music ed. So that's that's a pretty cool path. Um, yeah. And I'm curious, so with, with um, and, 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 and it sounds like, too, you know, you, you got involved in doing music for video games, but now, um, you know, kind of as you've developed these, this expertise, really, um, you've also contributed a lot to films, too. Is that right? Yeah. I, I started with, uh, with games and ads, and uh, I guess through social media with all the posts, except for noodles and food pictures, <laughs> um, pe people wanted those sounds. Hey, you have access to Ferrari, Lamborghini exotic weapons um so they heard the work and you know uh, approached me to make sounds for the pictures so um that just came later on so it's just really you know the endurance of keep working keep presenting what you work on and pretty soon somebody will notice and want that as well yeah so cool i um i recently watched a movie called baby driver Ah. And I, th I think you contributed to some of that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sure. I was uh, driving at Expressway one day, and I got a call from a producer, and he said something. I'm like, baby driver, what's that? So um, he said, uh, we want to hire you to record all the sounds, all the car sounds uh, for this picture. I said, okay, sure. And uh, he said, can you get here tonight? Like, oh. wow, okay. <laughs> I think it was like 2 p.m. when he called me. I'm like, get get to where? I said, Atlanta, Georgia. I said, okay, well, um, let's talk about what I need to do. So after negotiations was, was done, he said, well, I'm going to hang up, and my travel agency woman's going to call you. 
to schedule the flight. I said, okay, great. So she called me right away, and I, I get off the expressway and go back home. <laughs> um, and and um, so she asked me which airport, and I told her, and and we had to choose a different airport because it was uh, the last flight was still too early because I had to go home and pack and get my Pelican cases and all the gear. So, yeah, I had, I had to fly to Atlanta right away and and talk to the uh, sound guy uh, who was assigned to me, the the boom guy. And so we had similar equipment as far as the recorders. And so I tasked him to do the external sounds while I, I was focusing on the onboard sounds, what what you and I hear from inside the vehicle. So, yeah, I was, I was uh, and they assigned a, a stunt driver uh, to me to get all the shots. So through the emails, we had to, okay, we had to do drive straight and do a 90-degree slide. Or we had to do burnouts. We had to do uh, drifting. So um, as the emails kept coming in, we kept working on one car after another, to get all the, the um, crazy sounds for baby driver. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the thing <laughs> that really struck me. I mean, the, the detail in that sound design and, the, and the, the care that they put into that sound design. I mean, whether it's your type of movie or not, it was just mind-blowing, the, the overall sound design. And I remember watching, uh, having known that you you did a lot of the, re- the recording and, you know, thinking, you know, as they have the interior car shots as they're doing their getaway drives, um, I mean, even down to the to the gear shift, we're hearing those mm-hmm. kind of sounds too, and they sound, you know, they, you know, it just it felt like you're there because it sounded like okay, I've been in a WRX or that, I don't know if that was an nice. STI or yeah. was that an STI? It was. Yep. Okay, yeah, modified. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, I've I've heard that sound before, and and uh, that kind of it's almost like a kerplunking sound. It's like kerplunk, kerplunk uh, mm-hmm. as it drops into gear. Um, but it just yep. it was so like the the amount of uh, care that went into recording those and and to to kind of cutting those into the final mix was just really eye opening and really really refreshing too. I felt like you know like you don't usually hear that in a film. So, yeah. okay. um, so yeah. so when you do go about something like that, if you are going to record the interior the cabin sound, um, how do you usually go about miking that up? Okay, for for that particular one, we had one uh, the sank in cup mic. Um, which uh, is very, very sensitive. So we basically um, taped it to the stereo system of every vehicle. Um, and, uh, you know, which is probably the best place to get the perspective of the shifting, uh, the steering, um, all, all what, what basically what the driver hears. So, and, and the other ones were uh, mics in the engine compartment. So, uh, a lot of times I put mics right at the firewall, uh, maybe the left side, right side of the firewall. And, um, and another thing we did was put a mic in the air intake box. And at that time, I, I haven't refined my gear yet. So I asked the mechanic if, if I could put a mic into the air, air box. Uh, he said, yeah. He said, actually, I could drill a hole and then your cable would be you know, we could close the box all the way rather than leaving it open. So he was drilling holes into the air box <laughs> for the cable to go through. And so all those uh, mics are routed to where I sit next to the driver. And I had uh, two exhaust mics in the rear or on the side uh, for the trucks. And so all of them are uh, very carefully gaff taped so that whatever maneuvers we're doing, uh, it could be doing donuts or drifting or going really high speed, uh, they're not going to fall off. Right? They're not going to hinder the performance of, of driving, stunt driving. So they all go gaff taped to me, and uh, my recorder's on my lap the entire time, and with, with nice with my seatbelt. So as we're spinning, I'm, I'm watching and uh, adjusting my recording levels to get the best sounds possible. Okay. Now there are a couple things that I'm curious about in that in that overall setup. So first of all, what's uh, over over time I've seen you've used a variety of recorders. What are kind of your 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 go to? What what's the main okay. part of your kit? Okay, my my favorite recorder for in the vehicle on on board is the Sound Devices seventy seventy uh, eight T SSD. Mm-hmm. Um, what I, what I like about it is that oh, it sounds fantastic. Of course, is that the meters are there all the time 
no matter what I do in the menu, to any kind of adjustment, those meters are still there, very bright or not. You can adjust them uh, for daylight, for nighttime. And, and I could see, it, even if I'm spinning um, semi-astronaut-like, I could still <laughs> glance down and see if I'm hitting red loud as possible or not. Uh -huh. So even, even times when I'm hitting above zero, being the loudest, it still sounds great. Um, and this, the, the preamp is so clean, so powerful, so fast reacting. So I, I just love that recorder. And even though it's, it's not the newest today in year 2020, it's still my favorite recorder for recording car sounds. Okay. You know, what, and so, yeah, I just, I just love that gear. And uh, it, it also works well for external passbys. So, so the other guy, um, James, was he had his own 788, so he used that. So it was great to have, uh, you know, great gear for both onboard and externals. Cool. And I'm curious, um, this, remind me, I've used the 744T. It's been a long time ago. But I th mm -hmm. my, the thing that really sticks out in my mind is that the, when you talk about those meters, it was a, it's, it's just a bunch of LEDs, and they're, they're like in this curved arc is that right is am i thinking of that right where it's like it's uh, a ton of them and it, it takes up a ton of space on the whole front of the thing yeah. where it's very well, easy to see yeah the mixtures are you know like an arc but, okay. but the recorder is it's straight across it's straight okay uh, yeah so so i i still have my 744 and so I, I don't think i'll get rid of those two recorders um they are to me they're the best for sound effects you know, the people could talk about, oh, 32 bits. They're not 32 bit. Well, it's about the quality of sound. It's not about 32 bit, 48 bit later on. It just still sounds great today. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm keeping both for good. You know, okay. unless somebody changes my mind later. <laughs> but today in November 2020, it's still they're still my favorite. Okay, very cool. And. Um, yeah. I guess that kind of leads to uh, the next the next question that kind of comes to my mind is is how do you usually gain up for something like that? Do you I, I know and this may be a different answer when we're talking about firearms, mm -hmm. but um, you know the 788 of course has the analog limiters in it. Do you kind of push up against that ever, or do you try to stay well down below that? Um, and and how does that affect the overall sound? Yeah. Well, actually, the 744 has the analog limiters, but the okay. 788 has digital, and oh. we never use digital. So it, it's always off. If I need to um, use limiters, I'll use 744 or my 442 sound devices mixers. So that, those, that's when I need to go really loud, like firearms, explosions. So uh, far as, as far as recording cars, I'm going talking about cars, um, I love the dynamic range of, of very quiet idols up to the roaring uh, RPMs or tire skids, uh, the passbys. So you want those clean sounds that, that are adjustable, great for mixing during post. So so vehicles, I, I won't use uh, limiters. But for firearms, I do because you have to... Without the limiters, you're, you're, you're capturing a lot of unwanted distortions. So the limiters will give you wanted distortions versus unwanted. And it's a fine line of what's really good according to what you hear. So that's the difference between cars and guns. So Interesting. Cars, are, okay. yeah, cars are just the dynamics from very quiet that's still audible to the roaring engine and exhaust. And yeah, uh, the that... firearm is total opposite. Yeah, fascinating. So, so um, if you are gonna, if you are, um, so I imagine that, for example, if you're going to record a performance vehicle of some sort, and you mm -hmm. have a stunt driver um, mm -hmm. or a professional driver, um, do you usually have them do a run of what you're planning to do to get your levels, or do you just say, "Hey, let's go for it," and I'm going to adjust on the fly, or how, how does that usually yeah. work? Well, well, right at the beginning, uh, I'll adjust, but but right after right after beginning. Um, Pretty much all the cars were about the same. They, they weren't high-performance cars. I mean, there was a police Dodge Charger. There were trucks. So these were not the typical uh, Ferrari Lamborghinis. Right. Um, so so they, they weren't as loud. Um, so 
right away I could adjust just just from the experience of recording different kinds of vehicles before that. So, uh, but a lot of times I'll just say, let's just go because because we have plenty of memory cards, plenty of batteries to go through long days. You know? Okay. So so why not? You know, my my the terminology I use is called over record. So you should just over record because sometimes you'll capture great stuff even when you're test recording. So so why not? Just record yeah. right away. Yeah, yeah car, the memory cards these days, I mean it's it's so easy. <laughs> With oh, very yeah. high quality sound. I mean you can you can easily record all day yep, long. Exactly. Without any, yep. yeah. So so what I what I tend to do is I, I voice slate. I'll hit record and say, Okay, this is the um the drifting take. Okay. And and maybe at the very end before I hit stop, I'll I'll voice slate again and I'll say, Okay, that was a really good take better than the previous one so definitely pay attention so and that's that's another reason why i have the mic right at the radio i could just lean in and say what's happening yeah. you know what and I, I do this in the beginning of recording I'll, I'll hit record and say all right channel one it's engine left channel two is engine right and and etc and that way later on you could always recall you guess just just voice listen to the cab mic um, and then you'll find out what's going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, you're always going to lose paper, pens, pencils, okay, <laughs> maybe your phone. So it's always easier. It's a, it's a good practice I've found. It's just first thing you do is hit record and say, okay, this is going on, this is going on. Because I, I have sounds from 20 years ago. I could go back and know what I did because I spoke into the mic, which is uh, a great practice. So anybody listening, speak into the mic before and maybe after because uh, after you might say at the 10 minute mark it was a really cool bird that flew by you know and that was a eagle whatever so and when you do that um it's in there it's in there forever very cool what about um how do you run the mics for example if you're sitting in the you know the passenger seat and you've got mm -hmm. to get mics up into the engine compartment and then you've got to get some back to the exhaust as well how do you run mm -hmm. those? Is are you using wireless or are you running long cables no. or how do you do that? I I I, uh, I use cables all the time. Wireless is not enough to capture the really high fidelity, and uh, sometimes, it, as you do, uh, when you're running wireless, uh, there could be interferences here and there from anything, you know, especially Atlanta, busy place. So, uh, what I do is that I found out that every vehicle. When you open and close the hood of the engine, there's always some opening somewhere, especially with the thin lavalier cables. So what I do is I, with the Ryko Winnie wind jammer, I would either zip tie or a gaff tape in an area that just won't burn up, and I route the cable where when I close the hood, it's not going to snap anywhere, and I route it uh, sometimes below the windshield wipers. So that if you had to turn on the windshield wiper, it's not going to kill my cables. And I route them um, to the frame of the car up, up past my window, passenger side. Now, if it's a four-door, which I typically hope for, I route the cable to the door behind me and, and have all the cables go in. And believe it or not, you could shut the door on the cables and it won't kill the cables, you know, unless it's a very... Uh, exotic car where it's very airtight but most cars you could close the cable on and open it even standard XLR cables that are much thicker than oh. uh, lavalier cables so oh. I, I'll route it behind me and get it to where all the cables come in to the recorder so it's like a, it's like a snake and sometimes I'll, I'll um, velcro them together and so it's, it's all, all neat on one side or both sides of the recorders very cool and then, um, so no wireless. That makes that makes sense. I would think that would just add a, an element of, you know, e even if you could get the dynamic range that you wanted or the, you know, the response that you wanted. Um, who and wants to you don't fight? you don't want you don't want to, you don't want something <laughs> electronics in the engine compartment yeah. <laughs> because uh, yeah. you you would kill it. You know, we talked about mishaps. We could talk about. Um, yeah. So it's easier just to have the mic in there um, without anything else. Yeah, so we, we yeah we were actually talking beforehand, just out of my own curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, I I, have, I I guess that Watson, you'd lost, you know, tens of microphones over your career so far, and uh, <laughs> why don't you tell us about that? Okay, 
Well, for, for cars, I only lost one mic. Okay. Um, it, it was a, it was not a DPA, fortunately, because <laughs> I think I would cry if I killed a DPA or a Neumann. Um, but for, for a Transformers video games, I, I was recording a really modified Corvette. And this Corvette has 1,800 horsepower. So I had two mics in the engine compartment and two by the exhaust. And we were doing burnouts. So the guy floored it, and the power was so much that the car wasn't going straight. It was going sideways. And I'm watching my four-track recorder back then, and I'm seeing nothing coming from Channel 1. So I had to tap the guy to get him to stop the car. And when we opened the hood, this white smoke came out. I'm like, you know, once the smoke was gone, I'm like, oh, yeah, I think that mic melted to the fender. <laughs> so so it was just too much power um, if there's such a thing. So I had to cancel that day. And that, that was the beginning of the session. <laughs> so you, and that, that's something I'll throw in. It's a, anything harsh, do that at the very end. Don't do that in the beginning like I did. Big mistake. Um, so, so I... Uh, Repurchased the mic, fortunately the, the cheaper mic, and uh, when we scheduled a session, he actually opened the hood and took it off, and I mounted the mics on the side next to the engine, and that that probably shaved off three hundred degrees or so, <laughs> and, uh, and then we we were able to finish the session um, doing that. So, um, I've I've learned that there are certain materials you could buy to wrap around microphones. That uh, heat shields. Um, there's a silicone repair tape that they use for aircraft. It it can protect up to 400, 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we we've I've, we've done that. We wrapped mics around that and the cables so that we could put it in the engine compartment and not let it burn up. So <laughs> things you'll learn as you keep going. Okay. And and what kind of so you talked a little bit about lavalier microphones? Is that typically mm -hmm. what you're using to mic up in the engine compartment and the exhaust as well? What what are what are your, kind of your, the, some of your choices? Yeah, for for engine, I typically like lavalier mics. If if the car is really loud, like a race car, muscle car, I'll actually put dynamic mics in there too. I, I have these really tiny uh, Sennheiser dynamic mics, or if I have room, I'll use an Audix i5. It's a good mic. Um, the road uh, vocal mic M1. So uh, for for the exhaust, I I like uh, dynamic vocal mics because they reject uh, far proximity. You know, far from here, for example. So it will reject uh, road noise and wind better than the sensitive condenser mics. So um, that's my approach. Uh, some people will like uh, condenser mics, but from my experiments. Um, I, I do like, uh, you know, dynamic vocal mics. They do yeah. they do well for what I've done. Okay. Yeah. And I, so so I guess it sounds like the philosophy then is you're really trying to capture kind of a you're trying to isolate you're trying to to get kind of isolated sounds so that you can contribute so for the so the you know the post mixers can do what they need to with it is that the main idea? Yes. Yes. Okay. So so for vehicles it's selective sounds, and for weapons is all the sounds. Okay. Okay. Close, medium, far, and and on the weapon, and and so gunshots, the 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 sound just goes everywhere, bouncing off everywhere. So you want to capture all those wanted sounds. Whereas a car, okay. you get exhaust sounds plus the road plus the wind. So you're trying to isolate, just like you said. So you might have to angle a different way just to get the exhaust. So, and some, some cars are surprising that they look so aerodynamic, but when you put the mics in the rear for the exhaust, you still get wind noise blasting that area. So it's a fine line of sometimes I have to get out of the car and reposition or uh, apply more um, wind jammers on the mic to, to really um, fight against the wind. So wind, wind is my enemy for, for cars. <laughs> Yeah, especially once you start moving fast in those performance vehicles, I imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. Uh, too fast. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. So, um, what about the the dynamic range? So we've talked about, um, you know, that's one of the challenges. I, and I've had someone ask me this question, but I haven't done any vehicle recording really. So one of the questions they asked was, well, 
when I record exhaust on the, you know whatever this particular vehicle they were recording, they said the challenge they have is that if they gain to the right to the right place, so that you know once it goes high RPMs and they're getting you know the full on sound of the exhaust, um, mm -hmm. but then when they go back to an idle, it's like you know it's so quiet that you know the, the dynamic range is so wide <laughs> that they're yeah. it's, they feel like they're losing the idle. How do you how do you manage that, or is that something for the post team? Yeah, well. What what I do is, uh, you know, in addition to the mics on the vehicle for onboard sounds, uh, I also will stand outside with a shotgun mic and point at the exhaust or or the engine. So I'll do both uh, in the same session. So for example, one of the, one of the things I do, you know, if if I had the creative freedom to do the recordings for full set. I will do something called approach, stop, in a way, or approach, stop, shut down, start up, idle, and drive away. So, so I will have the driver drive towards me. If I point near me, that means I want his nose right next to my microphone for the engine sounds. Mm -hmm. And if I point sort of behind me, I want um, that indicates I want the exhaust next to me. So, um, so I'm getting variations of that. So. With those recordings, I could then give it to post, or if I do the editing, I'll replace the idle from the onboards with the external sounds. So I'm getting loud enough or pretty loud idle mm -hmm. or startup, uh, especially startup. When you do a startup from an onboard, it sounds pretty weak. So we, we often replace the external idles, uh, startups, along with the onboards. Uh, wait, that way the startup is loud along with the engine being loud so that's why i'll, I'll do all those over record so that i'll get the best of all the different angles from uh driver perspective versus the bystander perspectives okay again giving the giving the post team or the you know the video game mixers uh, you know just the option to use whatever works for the particular scene they're doing it's cool yeah 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 so so when, when i when i Sometimes when I'm asked to release libraries for, for sound designers, especially independent sound designers who don't have the big budget, I'll, I'll record that way. I'll record uh, plenty of external perspectives, you know, approach, stop in a way, or pass bys, so that they could mix in themselves. I'll give them hints that, yeah, put this startup from the shotgun mic with the onboard. That way it, it sounds consistent. And you talked about dynamic range you got quiet being oh so quiet and then loud being very loud you know that huge dynamic range that's that's another thing i like about the 788 recorder it lets me hear very quiet in a louder way in the same time it lets me hear loud so it's a nice in between of both whereas certain new recorders quiet it's too quiet <laughs> yeah really difficult to edit during post i found out so um, that's, that's why I like 788. It's a great recorder. That's interesting. Yeah. So, um, and actually if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to go back and there have been a couple of really interesting questions come up here in the chat. Um, sure. I know Lloyd, Lloyd had one relating to this very topic here. If you go up a little bit more, we're kind of searching through here. I've got a good active <laughs> group here. That's the one. Wow. There. So, uh, Paragraphs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, with all the updates since release, are you still of the mindset that the 788T is your choice over the Scorpio? And he actually wrote this before you kind of really talked about it in more detail. But give us your perspective. So we have these some of these new recorders. For example, as a someone who does mostly dialogue recordings, I've got an 888. Mm -hmm. Scorpio is okay. kind of its big big brother. Um, sure. wh what is it about those that make you, you know, it's, you really want to stay with your 788? Is is it something that the the newer ones don't have, or what's the reasoning there? The, you know, a lot of times I'm hired to do, to capture harsh sounds, loud sounds, stuff that's really hard to manage. Um, if, if the car I'm recording, a race car, it's loud all the time, I think Scorpio will win because it, it does that. So, so whereas uh, conventional cars, I would like the 788 because it, again, lets me hear everything in between from the quietest idle to the loudest RPMs. So, and, and then same thing with the Scorpio. If, if the, the car is really quiet, let's say it's a, a Lexus 
regular Alexis, very quiet. Mm-hmm. It will capture those quiet sounds very well and uh, make it easier. But if you have a car that if you drive it hard, then it becomes loud. That's where it's really difficult to capture. It's really, really quiet and really, really loud. So that, to me, is uh, harder to edit, to design from. It's a lot more time, actually. So, mm-hmm. and, and what I talked about in the beginning is that when I see the meters on the 788, they're always there. I like how I can adjust. Yeah. I like the, the the dial on the right. I could listen to each of the inputs very quickly and adjust. So I'm using both hands. I'm listening to the dial, and I'm turning the recording level with both hands. Whereas some of the modern recorders, they they take too long to get there uh, to let me listen to each of the inputs. So I, I don't care how how good you are, how fast you can multitask. Yep. You still need to really listen to each of those inputs, you know, the engine versus the exhaust, or yep. one exhaust to the other. So um, it's it's just easier from my experience that I, I use my 70E. Yeah, so it's an ergonomic thing partly too. Like, it, yeah, ergonomic yeah. is huge because, um, you know, I, I was working on this Mercedes uh, AMG ad, and we were doing donuts and stuff in this racetrack, I mean, producer was freaking out because i was in the car she thought i would die from that like no it's fun you know (laughs) i love it it's like it's like a roller coaster um if i look down as we were turning i'd probably get sick so i only look down when we were going straight and that that's something you 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 guys want to think about yeah if you're spinning don't look down because you'll get sick (laughs) so only look down briefly when you're going straight and watch where the driver's going and that will also keep you from getting sick. So, yeah, it, ergonomics is huge. So I want to be able to just quickly do that without doing extra steps. So I do have really good ideas of how to make something ergonomically faster, more efficient, so that I could uh, work faster. Because in, we're, in we're in this world, we have to hurry up and get things done. Yeah. So, um, yep. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying anything bad about Scorpio. It sounds great. If you look at my website, uh, Google Watson Wu Scorpio, you'll hear examples I posted. It, it's it's a fantastic sounding recorder for weapons and vehicles, you know, because it it does have analog limiters that 78 doesn't have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Another question here, real quick. I think you kind of talked about this a little bit with the. Um, kind of the aerospace tape, but are there also um, special audio cables that are heat resistant or mics that are heat resistant? Um, well, a lot, of, a lot of mics are heat resistant. Um, it's just, uh, you know, I, I like the silicone repair tape. And if you, um, yeah, look at, look at the, what aircraft people, the mechanics use when they uh, have to deal with electronics with the electronic cabling, they'll, they'll wrap those cables with the silicone repair tape. So I've I've actually yeah taken the mic with the uh, Ryko uh, mini wind jammer and I'll wrap the tape around where only slightly front is exposed because uh, just when you're in an engine compartment, it's gonna bleed through. It doesn't matter if you need to open a lot of space for an omnidynamic microphone. All you need is a little space opening. I mean the sounds everywhere. It's gonna get in there. So yeah. don't worry about that. So if you silicone repair tape, and what's great about it, it, it will bind to itself. So once you wrap it around, let it sit for a couple of hours until it really binds well. And those could sit in the engine compartment. And I use um, uh, ProGaff by ProTapes. It's the cloth-based gaffer tape, and I'll uh, tape it around. And I also use zip ties. So if you find somewhere like a piece of metal that you know it's not gonna heat up, you know, talk to the mechanic about where not to mic up. So I'll, I'll zip tie, because sometimes if, it, if, if the temperature changes too much, gaffer tape will come off. And you don't want that in the engine compartment. So uh, the silicone tape uh, will protect. And uh, yeah, the, the high quality microphone, the DPA, um, dynamic mics, you, if you're concerned, Put a dynamic mic in there, and uh, that way, it's it's a hundred dollars versus five to seven hundred dollars. So yeah. it's okay to kill a fifty-seven or fifty-eight uh, sure microphones. Uh, you're not gonna cry over that. Not as much, at least. Yeah, and then don't That's don't true. zip. Not as don't much. zip. 
<laughs> don't zip tie to an exhaust manifold. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Another, another quick question here uh, about 32-bit. So let's talk a little bit about that. You kind of touched on that. Um, wouldn't 32-bit be useful since it doesn't clip? What are your thoughts on 32-bit? From my experience and, and from my theory of thinking about 32-bit is, um, and it confirmed my theory, is that sometimes 32-bit sort of ducks. If you and I hear a gunshot, we duck. We, we just get scared. So if the sound is slowly rising up to loud, 32-bit does a great job. But I've, I've, I've seen it or heard it that sudden loud sounds it almost it's like artificial intelligence it just ducks it doesn't give you the full dynamics huh. so um i need to experiment more I, I i have recorded many times 32 bit for car sessions and when the car is really extreme like a lamborghini i i could i could tell it's a little color on the top of the dynamics so for regular cars it, it does a good job um, so I, I I do enjoy my Zoom F6 recorders. They're they're great, they're portable, and do a good job. Okay, interesting. And, and perhaps it's the uh, I, I under my understanding is that typically on those there are multiple converters, and so at some point they have to have a crossover where they kind of bring the two converters together to represent the mm -hmm. overall dynamic range. And maybe it's doing something interesting there. That yeah yeah. To to me, it sometimes sounds like it has a digital analog. Uh, that's uh, digital limiters, so it's a little colored, not as natural, not as uh, so it's not as natural as a seven eighty eight or, or a Scorpio without limiters on, to yeah. to capture the loud dynamics. Interesting, interesting. Okay, yeah. another question here from Ken. Uh, Ken asks, uh, your choice of using the MKH four eighteen S mid side shotgun mic. What kind of advantages do you see in using it versus a more traditional figure eight MKH thirty with a cardioid MKH forty? Good question. Good question. Yeah, four eighteen S. I've had that for a while, and yeah, I guess people see me post about it. I, I love that mic. It 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 reaches really far, but it reaches narrow. Okay, but being an MS, I could do what I want post. So uh, I do have the 40 and the 30 for my experiment. The 40 is a little too wide. So I end up catching a lot more ambience along with the vehicle, for example, doing a pass by. So whereas the 418 is very directional. And when I'm doing a pass by, the pass by is so long. It just, the car keeps going. You could still hear it very focused. So yeah, it's a, it's a long, uh, narrow shotgun mic. Um, not not the longest, but long enough that really uh, you're gonna capture what you're pointing at. All right. And people have complained, "Well, oh, the side is noisy." Well, listen to my recordings of different passbys, motorcycles, cars, trucks. It's you know if it's if it's following the vehicle instead of a fixed position of panning left and right. If you hear that following continuous, it's usually from that mic, and it does a great job. Just keep tracking, keep going as long as possible when that car is in view. So um, I like it better. You know, I, I, yes, the 30, uh, MKH 30, it's quieter, figure eight mic. Um, I don't like two mics because it, it rumbles, creates noise, and you need the rubber band or, or spend more money on a Sonella to get them fixed together. So I, I, I like the single point. So when I move the mic to, to follow the vehicle, it stays in place. I could drop it and it won't fall off. So oh, it's a great mic and it's really robust. It, I've been through rain, been through bad weather, and it just keeps going. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, another question here from Lloyd. This one actually kind of takes us to storage. We talked a little bit about storage, but what's your long-term data storage scheme at a high level? Are you using network-attached storage, separate hard drives, off-site storage? How do you manage that? Um, I have multiple. I have uh, direct, but long-term, I have uh, NAS. I have uh, Synology, uh, Buffalo Tech. I also have a few of the... Um, Got to think about it. Um, yeah, the, the multi-bay uh, 
USB uh, 3.0 or 3.1. Um, now I use a lot of different kinds, and uh, later on I think I'm gonna get like an eight bay Synology. That way, if something happens uh, with two hard drives or three, I could still retain my stuff. Yeah. Um, but on site, I always have a, a Western Digital Passport SSD. It's a it's a terabyte, and it's yeah it's, it's basically this small, and it's USB C and USB 3.0. It lets me go anywhere I want. I have a, a little MacBook Air 11 inch. It's older, but it's great. I mean, sometimes I have to look in my bag and see if, if it's there or not. It's so small, <laughs> uh, but it's enough. I could run Reaper and tons of tracks and plugins to do editing and design. Um, but yeah, I have that, and I have a, another five terabyte uh, Western Digital Passport uh, USB 3.0. Um, so those those are always with me, and I'll, I'll, when I get back home in the studio, I'll, I'll copy everything to the. Uh, uh, NAS um, drives. Cool, cool. Okay, and yeah. then another question here. Actually, we 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 were a little over halfway through, so I wanted to. It's probably a good time to switch and start talking about firearms, which seems to be another specialty of yours. So, uh, <laughs> this question here from Stan: What's your go-to mic uh, of choice for weapons recording, specifically handguns at a gun range, indoor versus outdoor? Wow, got all of that. One sentence. Uh, that's a, that's, yeah, that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, uh, the 418S, it's a great mic. Um, it's always with me. It, it could handle quiet gunshots. I mean, is there such thing as a quiet gunshot? Um, quiet to extremely loud. Um, so I'll, I'll use it for medium, far perspectives. Uh, I do like um, some of the road shotgun mics. I do like... Basically anything from Sennheiser does a good job. Um, for uh, I have these uh, Crown Audio SAS P. They um, they they do a good job. Uh, they're not the quietest mic, but they do a good job for loud sounds like firearms and crowds. Um, so yeah, there 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 are tons out there. I've I've I have a lot of microphones. So it depends on what the customer wants. Do they want the very tight sound, aggressive sound, or do they want an overall sound? So uh, when you talk about handguns, um, it seems like handguns, you want something that's just more focused rather than, um, so you want to use a lot of different cardioids or super cardioid uh, to be focused on what you want. So uh, I would say handguns are sometimes really hard to record. They're, they're kind of wimpy compared to higher caliber rifles. So uh, you do have to experiment uh, with see which one you like. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think some of the newer mics could really handle the high SPL. So try that. Uh, uh, definitely want um, a recorder that can handle the high SPL. When you have uh, inferior recorder, a lot of gunshots sounds like uh, popcorn. Really boring, you know. And that that's true from from mic to mic and weapon to weapon. It's like wow, they're sounding like literally popping popcorns. <laughs> so you you do want something that can really uh, react quickly and 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 give you each of the flavors for each of the microphones. So yeah. and that way, the Glock and the Sig will sound different from each other rather than the same. Interesting. And so most of those that you list, I think, are all those are mostly condenser mics. Then, yeah, the, mostly okay. condenser. The, okay. the times I use. Um, a dynamic mic is when the mic is downrange. So if we're shooting that towards you know towards the mic but not at the mic, it's called incoming, and that's what soldiers hear, you know, incoming fire. So that's when I rely on dynamic mics, uh, or or uh, sometimes I'll use uh, dynamic mics right next to the muzzle of the weapons or next next to where the ejection port with the empty rounds go flying out. Uh, for the higher SBO, um, I, I use two of these guys right next to 50 cal machine guns and it sounded great. I think if I put other dynamic mic, uh, excuse me, uh, condenser mics, I think it's just too much for them, too much pressure. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's when, if it's really loud, I'll throw in some dynamic mics as well. Yeah. And where does one go and where does one buy a road W U one? 
Um, I'm sorry, we can't. Um, <laughs> I, I I asked Ro to cut some mics for me that they already sell. And instead of doing that, they went ahead and made me these mics. And um, so, yes, people are mad and probably will get really mad hearing about it. But Ro won't sell them because if, if I plug this into a regular recorder, you're going to hear noise. You're going to crank all the way up to 10 and say, hey, this is a terrible sounding mic. But but this mic is made for car crashes, explosions, weapons. Um, that's it, really. You know, some, something really loud. So um, that's what they're for. So very specific purpose so to, for for what I want. And so um, I'm, I just appreciate uh, Road. You know, they sponsor me. And, and in return, I, I always plug about they're great microphones because they do make great microphones. At, at a gun session, uh, one of my clients on site said, hey, why does that $100 mic sound better than a $2,000 mic? I said, well, it, it's where you put it. It's how you use it. So he was floored. He thought it would have to be like a Neumann or Sennheiser to be a great mic. I said, that's not true. I've, I've caught great recordings with a $100 mic. So you don't need Sheps, you know, unless you really want to. Um, to get great sounds, so it's how how you use what you have, really. Yeah, more about the skill uh, mm-hmm. and placement exactly. stuff like that. Placement cool, and then the environment exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right, a uh, couple more questions. Uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about firearms here. But um, one of the okay. things when we t- we're talking about wiring up cars, um, especially with the lavalier oh. mics, you've got to run those cables a pretty good distance. How do you how do you extend those? Do you are there extension cables for lav mics? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I like about the DPA lavalier mics. And Shure has uh, these uh, mics that also have the micro dot of the DPA, the Shure Twinplex. And I use the model 47 for ISPL. So they're terminated with the micro dot. So you could take the extension micro dot and screw it on. And they're, they're very thin. And uh, that's, that's the key of dealing with the engine compartment. You could close the engine compartment and the cable is still thin enough, it's not going to make the hood pop up. You could close yeah. it all the way. So the micro dot uh, DPAs. And Road also makes the lavalier that uh, it's got the coupler. So you could do extension. So I have extension cables for, for micro dot that are 16 and 32 feet long. And that's on top of a, a, a mic that's just below 5 feet long, uh, to below 6 feet long. So... Um, I have these uh, Countryman B3 uh, lavalier mics, and you could special order them. So I, I order them at 30 feet long. Because one time I had to record a tank, and I'm thinking, all right, this tank is this long. And so if I'm going to put a mic in the front and route it to where I sit on top of the tank, it would have to be this long. So I figured out 25 to 30 feet is a good length. Um for this cable that way I don't have to deal with multiple micro dots so um, yeah 25 30 feet is a good length for most cars all right you know if you're doing a semi truck you definitely bring more <laughs> cables yeah I record a semi truck once I'm like oh I'm... so I brought extra 25 foot cables with me um, for that purpose cool cool um, another one here, uh, a question from Ken here, um, and this is a yes or no question. You don't have to reveal anything that you're not comfortable revealing, but do you have a secret list of quiet locations to record sound effects without noise from nearby highways, air traffic, etc.? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, not too far from me, it's my top secret road. Um, and this is one of my clients coined that phrase. He, he saw, kept seeing pictures and videos at the same location. And it's really far from traffic. I mean, the the main road, it's about two miles away or a three. And that road, it's 55 miles per hour. But from where I'm recording in the back area, it's pretty quiet. So we've ran all kinds of vehicles at certain large speeds. And, <laughs> and, and, and what I like about it is it's, it's very wide, meaning that there's there's no foliage so that I could see if something's coming or not. You know, like let's say a squirrel runs by and we could have time to break and get out of the way or honk at the squirrel. 
Um, so I'm blessed that I, I found a place like that. And, you know, I, I live in Florida. Uh, I'm away from the city. So there are places I can go that's relatively quiet, very quiet compared to Los Angeles or Miami, New York. So um, it's it's a great place, especially when it's non-summer. I'm going to capture great pass-bys, great external sounds um, without the interferences. Um, I'm hearing more airplanes, so I'm, I'm thinking more people are retired. They're flying little slow, slow Cessnas over me. <laughs> so, And I do believe the NSA watches me. When I hit record, that's when they start flying. So I have to tell the, I get the radio and say, hey, uh, sit there for a second. Let's wait for this slow Cessna to fly away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But but I, I am blessed where I live. Um, I, I get to do that. And uh, I, I hope they will keep it like that. It's been like that since the 70s, I was wow. told. And uh, I recorded well over 200 cars there. Wow. Um, and wow. It's a great place. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Another yeah. question from Lloyd here. He's uh, just back to kind of keeping track. Cause you have years and years, a couple of decades, decades worth of sound effects at this point. I mean, he's wondering if you uh, use any sort of software like maybe SoundMiner to kind of catalog things and keep track of stuff. How do you do that? I I I was convinced that when I released my libraries that to you know put in metadata, you know. So uh, I I worked in different studios where I I did use SoundMiner that I had to you know, keep track of the sounds for that project, uh, but but. I, I don't use that. I, I just, I'm very careful with how I name files. So if you say uh, we need uh, this Mustang, I know exactly where they're at. And I could get it up within 10 seconds or less. So, and that that's that's also true with the multiple NAS drives I have. So I know exactly where they are. And um, so if you if you name it correctly and consistent that way, you, you could find. So... It, to, to my opinion is that yes sound miner is cool but I don't want something doing stuff for me you know I, I like manual control mm -hmm. so if I if I name it correctly right away and here's another thing I do that some people don't know is that let's say I recorded a let's just say Mustang a 1969 Mustang I will make a folder that says Mustang 1969 and in that folder I'll have on board, and I'll put the names and the mics right after the word on board. So I might say TPA, I'll say 4061, blah, 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 in order, according to input numbers, input one through eight. And at the end, I'll put the name of the recorder, 788. And then, so I'll copy all the onboard files to that folder, that subfolder. In a separate folder, I'll put external, and I'll put the name and the mics, and again, ending with which recorder I used. So when I'm finished recording onboard sounds, I'll strap the recorder to the passenger seat with, this, with the seat belt and be outside with a separate recorder and mics to capture the same time passbys. And that, that's, that's, again, over-record because why not? You're there. If you have enough gear, memory cards, batteries, why not? Just keep recording so that uh, you're pleasing your customer. They'll come back for more. So I, when I name them that way, I know exactly what they are without having to put it in the editor and say, where is that voice mic? Oh, right there. Uh, so so this, this saves time. So um, when I want to spend money, it's more about microphones. Not because I'm an addict of microphones, but um, <laughs> I want different sounds. All right, if, if you know how many times I record an AK-47? Many, many times. So I don't want to use the same mics all the time year after year. I want different mics that can take that. So I'd rather spend money on something that give me more sounds, more great sound, than spending maybe $800 on sound minor. minor. Yeah. Right? They, they probably won't <laughs> like me hearing saying that, but, but that, that's how I feel. It, if I want to spend money... I want more great sounds. And how makes is that sense. possible? Well, yeah. microphones. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another question too, headphones. Let's talk headphones for just a minute here. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you know, you're, you're spending a lot of long days with headphones on and it's critical to what you're, you know, 
discerning what you're what you're getting and whether or not you have an issue you have to address. What kind of headphones do you typically use out there when you're recording? Okay. I've been using these a lot. This is uh, the Shure uh, SE eight forty six Pro earphones, and um, they they're they're the best. Um, I I can record. I can hear everything. Every subtlety, every loud sound from engine exhaust, the cab. And for medium, uh, regular to quieter firearms, I could I can monitor the shots as I'm really close to them. But for for gunshots, I like the white remote audio headphones I use. They they have the Sony seventy five oh six inside, mm -hmm. and they they really protect my ears. I could shoot an AK forty seven and record and listen at the same time, and and hear the subtleties to adjust the levels. So that's, that's how great those those uh, headphones are. Um, I was recording a helicopter once, and the the pilot was the pilot was a character. He decides to fly towards me and and go towards me like that. So the <laughs> rotor wash is really blowing at me. So yeah. my remote audio went flying off of me. <laughs> so I said, "Yeah, very funny." I laughed too. So I went and got these, put them on. And he did it again, and it just felt good. You know, it felt like a <laughs> nice big turbine cooling me down from the hot weather. So I, I like these a lot. They're, they're expensive, and I, I know there are other brands, models that uh, that still protect your ears and let you hear. But these are great. Sometimes I'm on the road, I'll do editing and design with these, and and working with Reaper and different software to to hear all the all the sounds I need. So I like this a lot because cause I'm in Florida. It gets really hot here or, or maybe helicopter I'm dealing with, but they're really portable. Um, it's just uh, getting used to how to put them on properly. You can route it behind you so the cable's not in front of you. Um, they're, they're great. You know, I do have uh, these um, Audio-Technica M50X. They're really good. Uh, they're great for regular to quieter sounds. Uh, but I find them sometimes really hot. Uh, remote audios too; they they get really hot. Um, and uh, but um, they're great for winter. You know, keep you warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. All mm. right, I think. Uh, how are we on time? We're just about out of time. We probably and we haven't even really gotten to talk about firearms all that much. So I'm. Well, let's let's keep going to firearms if you want to talk okay. about. It. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is everyone okay? Everyone okay? Our technical director yeah. Yeah, nods her head. She says we're good. Well, oh, let's talk good. about good. let's let's talk about firearms then. Just at a mm -hmm. high level, if you are at an, at an outdoor range, mm -hmm. how what, what's your general approach to recording a uh, say a rifle of some sort? Okay. Well, a lot of times I'll I'll get out there by myself and do some clapping around. I want to hear how the sounds are reflecting. Are there any annoying reflection sounds I should avoid and, and make sure the mics are not facing that direction. So I, I want to hear a nice reflection versus annoying reflections. So that, that's what I'll do. And uh, before we start uh, recording, I'll actually have the, the shooter in front of me uh, shoot. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll I'll plug my ears with my fingers, and as soon as the crack goes off, I'll let go, and hear how it reflects. So, my uh, my school of thought is that I want a nice aggressive sound, but I don't want this this annoying reflection that just keeps going or bounces back at you. So I might change different angles depending on where I am, and so that's how I approach. I'll, I'll say, okay, try shooting over there. Do it again. You'll, you'll shoot, and I'll plug my ears. And as soon as the shot goes off, I'll let go and take a lesson. And I'll determine where is the best location. And so what I'll do is um, once we figure out where to record, uh, I'll lay the mics around the shooter. Uh, and I'll do uh, so close distance, and I'll do mid and far distances. So depending on what the customer wants. Um, but I generally do those three perspectives, close, medium, and far. And close, they could be really this close to the to the front, the muzzle of the firearm, uh, to a foot away. And that's close. And and sometimes I'll put the lavalier right on the weapon, right where the ejection port is, from moving apart to get that mechanics plus the explosive sound. 
um, in uh, medium distance, it could be uh, 30 to 50 feet away. And then far, it could be very far. As far as I would have done was 650 feet away behind a shooter to get that really nice, uh, long, sustained uh, echo sound. So, um, and I'll, I'll get the mics there are a fine line of uh, capture the, the wanted distortion sounds, the, the aggressive, good distortion sound versus unwanted, blowing out distortion sounds. Um, so that's what I do. I'll adjust between all those areas to see what I'm hearing. So if, if you look at a wave file in your editor, and it looks like a solid block, horrible st stuff that we, we were trained not to do, you know, we give, to give yourself dynamic range. Well, um, sometimes gunshots sound great when they look something like that. Not always, but depends on the location and what, what you're using. So um, it's about how it sounds, not about what it looks like. So that, that's, that's when you have to really, you know, train yourself to hear that. And what I tell people to do is that you, you want to try learning how to mix a live concert rock jazz orchestral that way you learn how to uh, work on the fly and learn how to adjust to get the great sounds so it's not about being technical it's about how does it sound to you and does it sound good right and you train yourself that way yeah yeah good stuff okay um i don't know something has happened to our sound and it may be my internet here i'm not sure <laughs> oh, um but let's uh what i think we should probably do is if you're okay with this, Watson, what I'd love to do is maybe if we could schedule another time to talk. I think this whole co this whole topic of firearms is like a, you know, th that could easily fill an hour. I wonder if you yeah. might be willing to come back at a future time and we could talk about that in more detail. Would that be okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time. And if, if people want to learn more about you, where where should they go and, and your work? Um, yeah, yeah, just just uh, go to watsonwood.com and go to my blog page. Um, that's a good place. Uh, social media, uh, Instagram, it's good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just love to share what I'm doing, and people ask for it, and it's good for the manufacturer people too, like people like Rode, Sennheiser, Rode, uh, Neumann, um, DPA. They, they love all these contents because, you know, a lot of times, their stuff is music only. Like, well, yeah. gunshots are music to me too, you know. <laughs> um, and, and roaring engines, exhaust. So, yeah, yeah uh, the Watson Wood blog, I'll, I'll sometimes I'll write more details on it. So, uh, especially stuff I just find interesting that I want to share. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks so much for everything you, you give to the community. We really appreciate it. And thanks for coming thank, on tonight. Thank, we'll... yeah, thank you, Curtis. I really appreciate your, your asking me to do this. All right. It's my pleasure. All right, everybody, get out there and make some great sound. We'll talk to you all again real soon. Sure. See ya. Yeah, thanks for listening.